Uh, hi friends, so let's now continue with the balance question of your RTP May 23. In the last video, I have given you the first five problems. So maybe in this video, we'll cover problem six to ten. Let's come to question six, which is on risk analysis in capital budgeting. Remy Limited is a manufacturer of mobile phones in India. Currently, the company is dependent on foreign supplier for import of the battery. It is considering investment of 55 lakhs in a new machine for manufacturing battery of mobile phones. The expected life is 5 years, no scrap value. 3 lakh units will be produced and sold each year at a price of 20. Variable cost is 12, fixed cost is 6 lakh. 14% is the cost of capital. Important part is I'll have to ignore the tax and depreciation. Calculate NPV. You are also required to measure the sensitivity to a 10% decrease in the project variables. What are the variables? Selling price is one variable. Sales volume is another variable. And fixed cost is the third variable where there will be a 10% increase. Go through this. Go through the question. There's a problem on sensitivity analysis, a fairly simple question. Okay, uh, so here we are first required to calculate the base NPV. Good part is there is no tax impact and depreciation impact in the question. So whatever you calculate as profit before depreciation and tax will become CF80, cash flow after tax. There are three changes which are going to happen. One, there is going to be a 10% decrease in selling price. Second, there is a 10% decrease in sales volume. Third, there is a 10% increase in fixed cost. They could have also given sensitivity analysis on variable cost, but they have given this and I am required to measure how is the project moving in line with these. Project moving in line with these. So let's do this. Working note 1. Computation of base NPV. Base NPV. Year cash flow. PVF at 14% and DCF. Year cash flow PVF at 14% and DCF. Year cash flow PVF at 14% and DCF. Just give me a minute. Yeah. So the year cash flow is year 0 and 1 to 5 years together. We'll do the calculation. Year 0 and 1 to 5 years together. The initial outflow of the project is 55 lakh rupees. We are planning to spend 55 lakhs on the project. That's my initial outflow. 55 lakhs is my initial outflow. And the every year inflow depends on my selling price and volume sold. Uh, so I'll do a small calculation. CF80 is equal to. We have sold 3 lakh units. So 3 lakh into 20 minus 3 lakh into 12. What is 12 is variable cost. 3 lakh into 20 is the revenue minus 3 lakh into 12 is the variable cost minus 6 lakh of fixed cost minus 6 lakh of fixed cost 3 lakh into 20 minus 3 lakh into 12 minus 6 lakh of fixed cost revenues minus variable cost minus fixed cost these items will undergo change in every scenario so the difference is 18 lakh We need the fire annuity factor. 
in your calculator you can do it i'll do it in excel 1 divided by 1.14 will give you the first year factor equal to will give you the second year third year fourth year and fifth year all put together is 3.433 we normally take three decimal for the factors and dcf So the NPV, the base NPV of the project is 6,79,400. Sensitivity is basically measuring the percentage change. How will this change happen? When you change these parameters, so base NPV is this much. The NPV will undergo change. The NPV will undergo change when you change your various parameters like. The parameters we have is one is selling price. 10% uh, decrease in selling price, 10% decrease in sales volume and 10% increase in fixed cost. These are the three parameters we are required to analyze. Working note 2. Sensitivity analysis with 10% decrease in selling price. 10% decrease in selling price. 10% decrease in selling price. Same thing, but the CFAT number is going to change. Year cash flow PV of DCF, write it. Year cash flow PV of DCF. Year 0, negative 55 lakhs. Negative 55 lakhs. The CFAT number will undergo a change because the CFAT now is going to be 3 lakhs into 18. Selling price reduces by 10%. 3 lakh into 18. The selling price has reduced by 10%. Earlier it was 3 lakh into 20. Now it's 3 lakh into 18. The difference I think is 12 lakh. The difference is 12 lakh. 12 lakh. 3 lakh into 18 minus 3 lakh into 12 minus 6 lakh. So, sorry, 12 lakhs. New NPV is negative. New NPV is negative, which is basically the project will get rejected if this 10% decrease happens in selling price. Revised NPV is negative. What we do in sensitivity analysis is you calculate the revised number. Change in NPV. Change in NPV is the new NPV minus the old NPV. How much is the change in the NPV? How much is the change in the NPV? New minus old. So NPV is changing by some 20 lakh 59,000 or broadly 20 lakh 60,000 is the NPV change. Change in NPV 20 lakh 60,000. Change in NPV is 20 lakh 60,000. The NPV has changed by 20 lakh rupees 60,000. 20 lakh 60,000. That's the change in NPV. And finally, percentage change in NPV. Formula for this is change by base. Base means the old NPV. Change by base into 100. Percentage change in NPV. How much is the change happening in the NPV? Percentage change in NPV. Uh, there is no sign for this. So, this 20 lakh divided by the original NPV into 100. That is, 10% decrease in selling price will change the NPV by 303%. That is why positive NPV became negative. It will change by 303%. A 10% decrease in selling price will lead to 303% fall in NPV will lead to 303% fall in NPV. I see I did one more calculation in this question. Uh, not very critical, but yeah, they have done. So I'm doing it. 303% sensitivity times. They have expressed this in times also. What is times is a 10% change, a 10% change. Led to 303%. So 
divided by 10 basically if price changes by 1% NPV will change by 30.32 times of that NPV will change by 30.32 times of the percentage change in price so if price changes by 1% NPV will change by 30.32% uh, in this question price has changed by 10% NPV has changed by 303% this is one calculation where there is a 10% decrease in price next is Ten percent decrease in sales volume. Ten percent decrease in sales volume. The CFAT number will undergo a change now. Ten percent decrease in sales volume. After written the original numbers, write this. Ten percent decrease in sales volume. That's the next scenario we are going to analyze. Ten percent decrease in sales volume. That's the scenario we are required to analyze. So here, my units will change. It will become. Two lakh seventy thousand minus two lakh seventy thousand. The variable cost part also. CFAT is fifteen lakh sixty thousand. CFAT is fifteen lakh sixty thousand. Uh, I'm kind of uh, wanna do the same thing. Revised NPV negative 144. Revised NPV is negative 144. Calculation is broadly going to remain same. There I think it became more negative. Revised NPV negative 144. Change in NPV is this minus the original NPV. Minus the original NPV. This is error in the formula. New minus old. So 8 lakh that is from the positive NPV of some 679, it has turned out to be negative. So overall, there's a change of 823920. Overall, there's a change of 823920 and percentage change by base into 100. Percentage changes change by base into 100. 10% decrease in sales volume leads to 121% decrease in NPV. 10% decrease in sales volume leads to 121% decrease in NPV. 121% decrease in NPV. And the sensitivity is 12.13 times. The sensitivity times is 12.13. Sensitivity times is 12.13. This is for 10% decrease in sales volume. This is for 10% decrease in sales volume. This is slightly better than the selling price change where 10% led to some approximately 300% change. Here 10% change is leading to 121% which is also not good because more than 100% change will make NPV negative. Next is fixed cost part. I hope you have noted else you can pause the video and note it. With 10% decrease in sales volume. I could have done this as a single working note also. With 10% increase in fixed cost. 
10% increase in fixed cost 10% increase in fixed cost I'm copying the base CFAT calculation and then we'll change it 10% increase in fixed cost sensitivity analysis with 10% increase in fixed cost three sensitivity analysis was needed one was on selling price second was on sales volume third is on fixed cost 10% increase in fixed cost the cfat number is going to be 3 lakh into 20 minus 3 lakh into 12 minus 6 lakh 60000 minus 6 lakh 60000 Minus six lakh sixty thousand. There is a ten percent increase, so it is going to be seventeen lakh forty thousand. Third scenario was ten percent increase in fixed cost, seventeen lakh forty thousand. Here the NPV at least continues to remain positive. There is a change. Change is obviously there. But NPV continues to be positive. The NPV continues to be positive. There is a change. There is a change. Some 2,5,000 is the fall. Percentage change is 2,5,000 on a base of that 674. And sensitivity is only 3 times. That is 10% change has led to only 30% change. 10% increase in fixed cost led to 30% fall in NPV. Only 30% fall in NPV. I hope this is clear. If there are doubts, you can let me know. Else, please complete writing this. Any doubts, please let me know. This should be clear by now. Okay, I'll end with this then. Okay, let's now move to question 7, uh, which is on dividend addition, a fairly simple question, a uh, general normal set of question in this area. Rambo Limited has 1 lakh equity shares outstanding for the year 2022. Current price is 100 each. Company is planning to pay a dividend of 10, required rate of return, which is cost of equity. Based on MM approach, calculate the market price of share of the company when the dividend is declared, not declared. How many new shares are to be issued at the end of the year on the assumption that net income pat, net income is pat, is 40 lakh, investment budget is 50 lakh when dividend is declared and dividend is not declared. Also prove that the market value will remain same whether dividends are distributed or not distributed. All the requirements, we are going to do it in a single table. We have a table format which will capture all these three requirements. Go through the question. Okay, uh, let's start. This is on Modi Gilani Miller approach where they have stated that the value of the firm at the end of the year will remain same whether dividend is paid or not paid. Uh, if you declare dividends, you may have to issue more shares for funding your investment project. If you don't declare, you will need lesser shares. In the end, net net, the valuation of the company or the firm will not be impacted with or without dividend payment with or without dividend payment particulars in two columns particulars dividend paid dividend not paid dividend paid and dividend not paid these are the two situation dividend paid and dividend not paid 
And according to Modigliani Miller, P1 price at the end of the year is P0 into 1 plus KE. That is whatever is the price at the beginning of the year that should go up. That should go up by the amount of cost of equity or by the cost of equity. That should go by the cost of equity. And if any dividends are paid, you can subtract them. P0 into 1 plus KE minus the dividends which are paid. Price at beginning. Technically called as P0. Price at beginning. Technically called P0. 100 rupees. 100 rupees is the price at beginning. Cost of equity. Cost of equity is required rate of return. Cost of equity is required rate of return of the shareholder. 15%. Cost of equity is 15%. Some power issue. Uh, just give me some time. Okay, uh, let's resume. Uh, so I was telling cost of equity is 15%. So the closing price is going to be 100 into 1 plus 15 percent minus dividend of next year or coming year. Dividend of coming year which is D1. If you pay dividends you are likely to pay a dividend of 10 rupees and no dividend 0. So closing price is equal to. 100 into 1 plus 15 percent which is 1.15 100 into 1.15 1 plus 15 percent minus dividend minus dividend this answers part one of the question 100 into 1.15 minus dividend 10 rupees and zero this answers part one of the question that is what will be the closing price what will be the closing price if dividend is declared not declared Next part is on new shares to be issued. Profit after tax. You are making a profit of 40 lakh rupees. Profit after tax 40 lakh. In this part, you pay something as dividend. Dividends paid, which is 10 rupees into 1 lakh equity shares outstanding. 10 into 1 lakh equity shares outstanding. So 10 into 1 lakh is the dividend paid. Here no dividends are paid. And this indirectly give me a higher retained earnings uh, if you don't pay dividend and lower retained earnings if dividends are paid. So retained earnings 30 lakh and 40 lakh. Retained earnings 30 lakhs and 40 lakhs. Retained earnings 30 and 40, 30 lakh rupees and 40 lakh rupees. Investment needed. I want to do an investment of 50 lakhs at the end of the year. Investment needed. The company plans to have an investment budget of 50 lakhs. 50 lakhs. So, in this investment, 50 lakh. 30 lakh will come from retained earnings and 40 lakh will come from retained earnings for two situation. Balance you will have to issue fresh shares. So, amount of external equity. External equity is fresh shares. New shares 50 lakh minus what you have. Amount of external equity 20 lakhs and 10 lakhs. Amount of external equity 20 and 10. 20 lakhs and 10 lakhs. And number of shares, which is amount of external equity, point number 9, divided by the closing price, 9 by 4. Amount of external equity divided by the closing price, divided by the closing price. Amount of external equity divided by the closing price 1947.62. I round, I round it off, and the other one also I round it off. 
19048 and 8696. This answers part two of the question. Part three wants us to prove that the value of the firm would remain same whether dividends are declared or not declared. That is the value of the firm remains same at the end of accounting year. Whether you pay dividends or you don't pay dividend. Value of firm. Last part. Which is closing shares. Closing shares into closing price. Closing shares into closing prices value of firm. Closing shares into closing prices value of firm. Is the value of firm. Closing shares. 1 lakh plus 19048 1 lakh plus 8696 closing shares closing shares into closing price value will approximately remain same some rounding of difference will be there because we rounded off the number of shares if i multiply 1 crore 25 lakh okay in fact it's exactly same uh, there could be some it should have been exactly 1 crore 25 lakhs in fact it should have been 1 crore 25 lakhs it turns out to be 1 crore 25 lakh 40 and 1 crore 25 lakh 40 that's rounding off which we did if we don't round off the number of shares and write it in decimals you would have got exactly 1 crore 25 lakh rupees which indirectly proves that the value of the firm remains same whether dividends are paid or dividends are not paid. I say I would have solved this in a slightly different manner. Conclusion remains same. The conclusion is I have to prove that the value of the firm remains same whether you pay dividends or you don't pay dividends. Clear? Any doubts on this? Any doubts on this? With this, this question will get over. Okay, uh, let's move to the question on management of receivables. This problem is on cash discount. River Limited currently uses the credit terms of 1.5 slash 15 net 45 days. Average collection period is 30 days. Presently having sales of 50 lakhs and 30% customers are availing the discount. Chances of default are 5%. Variable cost constitute 65%, total cost constitute 85%. Company is planning liberalization of credit terms to 2 by 20 net 50. Sales will increase by 5 lakh. Default chances are 10%. Collection period will decline to 25. Won't be any change in fixed cost and 50% customers are expected to avoid the discount. Tax rate is 35%. This problem has tax rate data. Evaluate the policy in comparison. Recommend whether new policy should be implemented. Cost of capital to be 10% post-tax, 360 days in a year. Go through this. It's a straightforward question. Only thing is there is some tax adjustment. There is some tax adjustment to be done in this question. That's the only, uh, not a tricky part, but that is something which we normally don't do. In this question, we have the tax adjustment part. Go through the problem. Okay, uh, let's analyze this. It's a normal question we do where we do sales, less variable cost, less fixed cost, we get gross benefit, less bad debt, less cash discount. Interest cost is one item we calculate or technically called as opportunity cost. Here that is after tax. So small bit of change will happen. Let's put it in our normal format. Question 8. This data in our format. I'll give you uh, two different ways of doing it. Both will give the same conclusion, but uh, 
there's slight variation, different variation, particulars existing revised existing and revised sales less variable cost less fixed cost gross benefit less cash discount bad debt and we normally write interest cost or opportunity cost that is after tax the interest or opportunity cost is after tax so let's wait for some time gross benefit you will get something called as profit before tax profit before tax i can subtract the interest cost earlier also then you will have to convert the percentage i'll explain that in some time less tax at 35% profit after tax profit after tax less interest cost what is interest cost is 10% post tax 10% post tax and net benefit after tax net benefit after tax and below this is our normal format computation of interest cost i'll give you twin answers slightly different way of doing both computation of interest cost for that we have full cost of sales credit or collection period collection period debtors and interest cost debtors and interest cost write the format this is our normal format to solve a question full cost of sales collection period debtors interest cost normally i subtract interest cost at the pbt level that is before tax here we are subtracting it after tax because the given return is after tax return the given return is after tax return let's capture some of this data point sales existing is see the credit term is 1.5 slash 15 uh, 1.5 by 15 net 45 what does this mean is you will get one and a half percent discount if you pay in 15 days one and a half percent discount if you pay in 15 days otherwise you have to pay in 45 days one and a half percent discount if payment is done in 15 days otherwise pay in 45 days this will change us two percent discount if you pay in 20 days two percent discount if you pay in 20 days otherwise pay in 50 days five zero sales is 50 lakhs present sales which will go up by the sales is likely to increase by 5 lakh rupees sales will increase by 5 lakh 50 lakh will become 55 lakh variable cost is 65 percent total cost is 85 now that is very critical this is 65 Fixed cost is balance 20, balance 20 percent, put together 85, put together 85, 65 percent is variable cost, fixed cost is 20 percent, fixed cost is 20 percent, put together 85, put together 85, variable cost this side is 65 percent. Fixed cost will not be 20%, it will continue to be same 10 lakh. It will continue to be same 10 lakh rupees. And my gross benefit is going up because sales is increasing. There is an increase in the gross benefit. Variable cost is 65%. Fixed cost is 20% for existing and same number will continue. Same number will continue in the revised situation. 
same percentage is likely to continue in the revised situation. Same percentage will continue. Cash discount is as of now one and a half percent, one and a half percent discount on my sales, but only uh, I think some percentage of people, only 30 percent people take discount. As of now, sales into 1.5 percent into 30 percent people, sales into one and a half percent into 30 percent people, only 30 percent people take discount. And in the revised situation, 2 by 20, which is 2 percent discount, which is 2 percent discount. And in this case, 50 percent people will take discount. 50 percent customers will take discount. So in the revised situation, sales into 2 percent into 50 percent. Sales into 2 percent into 50 percent. Earlier situation, sales into 1 and a half percent into 30 percent. Into 2 into 50 percent. Bad debt is chance of default. Chance of default is 5 percent. Chance of default is 5 percent. Revised situation chance of default is 10 percent. 5 and 10 percent. Chance of default is 5 percent. Bad debt risk is very high now. Most probably the the proposal will get rejected because of the bad debt risk. 5 percent has become 10 which is a significant increase. Yeah, you see the PBT going down. Tax is 35 percent. PAT. Tax is 35 percent. PAT. I will explain an alternate way also. Interest cost based on full cost of sales which is variable cost and fixed cost put together. Variable and fixed put together. Variable cost and fixed cost put together is the full cost of sales. The collection period as of now is 30 days because more people avail discount it goes down to 25 days. So that is the benefit of this new scheme which is coming in. Uh, somewhere there is a reduction in the collection period but not sure whether the proposal will get still accepted. Debtors is cost of sales we normally do it on cost of sales into 30 by 360. Alternatively, we could have done sales into 30 by 360 also. We normally do it on cost of sales. Cost of sales into 30 by 360 and cost of sales into 25 by 360. 25 by 360. Interest cost is 10 percent. Interest cost is 10 percent after tax. How to give effect before tax? I'll explain. 10% after tax, 10% after tax that is the interest cost. Why we are doing at after tax level is because the cost of capital is given after tax. Cost of capital in the question given 10% post tax, 10% is post tax interest cost, net benefit after tax. 274 became 176 proposal will get rejected proposal will get rejected there's an alternate way of doing this i'll explain it you need not write that part but this part completed net benefit after tax 274 958 176 229 proposal will get rejected as there is a reduction in the overall net benefit Reduction in the net benefit. Proposal is going to get rejected as there is a reduction in the net benefit. Reduction in net benefit.
so i'll do the revised calculation just in case i don't do after tax i subtract here itself less interest cost overall conclusion calculation and all is going to remain same just that we subtract it earlier itself we do a subtraction earlier itself in this case my interest cost is going to be debt hours into n divided by 1 minus tax rate the the interest cost is not 10% it is 10 divided by 1 minus tax rate that is 10 divided by 65% it will be approximately i think some just give me a minute n divided by 0.65 it is going to be some 15% the interest cost is broadly going to be 15% in divided by 1 minus tax rate so the interest cost is at some 15.38% 10 divided by 1 minus tax rate and now i can subtract before tax now we can subtract this before tax balance part and all remain same we'll do this before tax conclusion is going to remain same pat is 274958176229 conclusion is going to so you can subtract it before tax also you can subtract it at after tax also if you subtract it at before tax then it is not 10% it is 10 divided by 1 minus tax rate because 10 is the after tax cost pre tax is pat that is the after tax rate divided by 1 minus tax rate after tax rate divided by 1 minus tax rate divided by 1 minus tax rate you will have to do that and then get to this number so pat is 274958 176229 that is the pat figure pat is 274958 176229 we are going to reject the proposal i don't want you to write this calculation earlier calculation is also sufficient if there are doubts let me know else i end this question any doubts on this please let me know okay i end this then okay let's move to the last question uh, uh, that is question 9 then is a theory question let's move to question 9 uh, which is on working capital kalyan limited has provided you the following information for the year 2021 22 by working at 60% of its capacity company was able to generate sales of 72 lakhs direct labor cost per unit amounted to 20 material cost was 40% of the selling price selling price is 3 times of the direct labor and profit margin is 25% of the total cost i think one of the good problems in this uh, rtp for the year 2022 23 following estimates are made production and sales will increase to 90% of its capacity raw material per price will remain unchanged direct expense per unit will increase by 50% labor per unit will increase by 10% despite the fluctuation in the cost structure company wants to maintain the same profit margin on sales raw material will be in stock for one month fg for two months production cycle is for two months credit period allowed by supplier is two month sales are made to three zones zone a zone b and zone c uh that is zone a 50% of sales 2 months credit period zone b 30% sales 3 months credit period and zone c 20% cash sale there are no cash purchases and cash balance will be 111000 company plans to apply for working capital financing estimate nwc of the company with receivables being taken on sales so indirectly it is the total approach receivables being calculated on sales also compute the mpbf under the three criteria of tandem committee norms go through this go through the question a good problem one of the best problems in this rtp
okay we are required to do working capital estimation uh, this is an existing entity because they have given the data for 21 22 and we are required to find it for 22 23 in case of an existing entity we'll have a shorter format of doing the problem so let's start working note 1 cost sheet for 2021-22 and 2022-23 cost sheet will become the basis for us to do the calculation particulars Two thousand twenty one twenty two per unit total and twenty two twenty three again per unit and total per unit and the total numbers particulars two thousand twenty one twenty two and 2022-23 per unit and total somewhere when we uh, complete this table major chunk of analysis with respect to estimation will be over uh, it says it did a sales of 72 lakh direct labor cost is 20 material cost is 40 percent selling price is three times profit margin is 25 percent and some in the next till para they have talked about direct expense per unit will increase by 50 percent so i believe there are three expenses one is direct material direct labor and direct expense because direct expense per unit will increase so direct material will write the figures in some time direct labor direct expenses total cost profit and sales this is the format we'll keep it direct material direct labor direct expenses total cost profit and sales data given in the question is sales is 72 lakhs 72 lakhs labor cost is 20 per unit Material cost is 40% of the selling price. I don't know the selling price as of now. Okay, selling price is also known. Selling price is three times of labor. Selling price is three times of labor. Selling price is three times of labor cost. And the direct material cost is 40% of the selling price. 24 kind of uh, done with the last year cost sheet in that the number of units i can say is 120000 so in bracket we'll write 120000 units 72 lakh divided by 60 72 lakh divided by 60 120000 units 120 into 120 into 120 120000 units are there into 120 and into 120 direct material 24 direct labor 20 into 1 lakh 20 material cost is 40 percent of selling price profit margin is 1 by 4 25 percent 1 by 4 on cost it will become 1 by 5 on sales profit margin is 1 by 4 on cost, it will become 1 by 5 on sales. So, profit margin is 1 by 5 on sales and balancing figure will give me the overall cost. Direct expenses is balancing figure, which in this case is 4 rupees. Direct expense balancing figure 4 rupees. This takes care of the 21 22 statement. 2021-22 statement material cost 24 labor cost 20 expenses 4 rupees total cost is 48 profit is 12 sales is 60 next year 2021-22 we operated at 60% capacity we operated at 
60 percent capacity by working at 60 percent of the capacity so we can say 60 percent equal to 1 lakh 20 thousand we are now going to move to a 90 percent capacity so 90 percent is equal to question mark 60 percent equal to 120 90 percent equal to 1 lakh 80 thousand units will increase to 1 lakh 80 thousand from 1,20,000 units have increased to 1,80,000. From 60% capacity, we have moved to 90% capacity. From 60% capacity, the increase has happened to 90%. Raw material price per unit will remain unchanged. Copy paste at 24. Raw material will remain unchanged. Direct expense will increase by 50%. So, 4 into 1.5 will increase by 50%. Will increase by 50%. Direct labor will increase by 10%. Any change in variable cost represents a change in variable cost per unit. So, material remains same. Labor went up by 10%. Expenses went up by 50%. Units is 1 lakh 80 now. 1 lakh 80 thousand units. 1 lakh 80 thousand units. Units has increased to 1 lakh 80 thousand. Now the profit margin is same profit margin. I want to maintain same margin. That is earlier it was. 1 by 4 on cost, 1 by 5 on sale, same margin. So, 1 by 4 on cost, 1 by 4 on cost or 1 by 5 on sales, whatever way you want to call it. Sales goes up to 1 crore 17 lakhs. Sales from 72 lakhs has increased to 1 crore 17. Complete this. If there are doubts, let me know. This is the most important part. 72 lakhs has become 1 crore 17. 72 lakhs has become 1 crore 17 lakhs. Profit margin of 1 by 4 on cost or technically 1 by 5 on sales. Once this is done, we can do estimation. Creditors alone is slightly different. Why different you will understand. We can now get into the estimation part. Creditors will have a slight bit of different calculation. Working note 2, working capital estimation for 2022-23. We are doing total approach technically, particulars calculation amount. Particulars calculation amount. We are doing total approach. As you read a current asset or a current liability, we will do the estimation. Capital A current assets. If I get any current liability, I'll leave some space and write current liabilities. Working capital estimation for 2022-23. Capital A current assets. Start with current assets. First para was only on the cost structure. Uh, till this was for cost structure. Raw material will remain in stock. So stock of raw material. Stock of raw material will remain in stock for one month. Stock of raw material is one month. RM consumed into 1 by 12, which is direct material into 1 by 12. Direct material 2022-23 into 1 by 12. Into 1 by 12. RM consumed into 1 by 12. Uh, whatever I called it as total cost, maybe let me write the other name for this. Prime cost, works cost, COP, COGS, everything is same. COS, everything is same here. Stock of raw material 3,60,000. Stock of raw material 
स्टॉक ऑफ एफ जी टू मंथ सीओ जीएस इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व स्टॉक ऑफ एफ जी सीओ जीएस इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व टू मंथ स्टॉक सीओ जीएस इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व फिफ्टीन लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड स्टॉक ऑफ एफ जी फिफ्टीन लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड सीओ जीएस इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व स्टॉक ऑफ डब्ल्यू आई पी प्रोडक्शन साइकिल इज फॉर टू मंथ्स अवर रूल इज हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ डायरेक्ट मेटीरियल प्लस फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ डायरेक्ट लेबर प्लस फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ डायरेक्ट एक्सपेंस फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ अदर्स हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ डायरेक्ट मेटीरियल प्लस फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ अदर्स प्लस फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ अदर्स इन टू बाई ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड परसेंटेज ऑफ डायरेक्ट मेटीरियल टू मंथ इज द प्रोडक्शन साइकिल सो डायरेक्ट मेटीरियल फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ डायरेक्ट लेबर फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ डायरेक्ट एक्सपेंसिस इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ मेटीरियल फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ लेबर फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ एक्सपेंसिस इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ मेटीरियल आई डू द कैलकुलेशन अगेन हियर हंड्रेड परसेंट फिफ्टी परसेंट दैट इज द रूल फॉर डब्ल्यू आई पी अगेन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑल पुट टूगेदर सिक्सटी एट लैक फोर्टी थाउजेंड इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व सिक्सटी एट फोर्टी इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व credit allowed by supplier i'll come to this calculation in some time there is an adjustment which is logical but ici did not do this in many question but here they have done it's good i'll explain this credit ours sales are made to three zones so debt ar for zone a debt ar for zone b i'll do it separately zone c there is no debt ar because it's cash sale it is entirely cash sales Zone A is fifty percent of sales. So zone A is fifty percent of sales into two by twelve, two months. Zone A is fifty percent of sales into two by twelve. Zone B is thirty percent of sales into three by twelve, two by twelve, and three by twelve. Fifty percent of sales into two by twelve. Thirty percent of sales into 3 by 12. Zone C is cash sales. Zone C is cash sales. 50 percent sales into 50 percent into 2 by 12. Sales into 50 percent into 2 by 12. Sales into 30 percent into 3 by 12. Zone C I don't have anything because that is cash sales. Zone A is 50 percent of sales into 2 by 12. Zone B is thirty percent of sales into three by twelve. Credit ours is on RM purchased. Credit ours is on RM purchased into two by twelve. Now there is going to be slight variation. RM purchased into two by twelve. What is the variation? Is RM consumed is equal to opening stock plus purchase. Minus closing stock. Normally both will be same, but here there is a change in level of activity. There is a change in level of activity. RM consumed is equal to opening stock plus purchase minus closing stock. Forty three lakh twenty thousand is RM consumed. Forty three twenty is equal to forty three lakh twenty thousand is equal to opening stock is last year. Last year closing stock would have been last year closing stock is last year RM consumed. Last year closing stock is last year RM consumed into one by twelve. Last year RM consumed this. So last year closing stock. Last year closing stock is this year opening stock. Last year closing stock is equal to last year RM consumed into one by twelve. Purchases balancing figure. Closing stock we had calculated three lakh sixty. Lakh sixty. Basically, the closing stock of last year is twenty eight lakh eighty thousand into one by twelve. This year is forty three lakh twenty thousand into one by twelve into one by twelve. 
last year 2818 to 1 by 12 this will give me purchase balancing figure 4320 240000 plus purchase minus 360 purchases is equal to 4320 plus 360 minus 240 44,40,000 purchases is 44,40,000 this is a very important adjustment in the question because there is a change in the level of activity there is a change in the RM consumed vis-a-vis -vis RM purchased 44,40,000 44,40,000. So, 44,40 into 2 by 12. Apart from that, there is one more item which is cash balance. 1,11,000. Let me know if there are any doubts. Except for that credit task adjustment, everything else is straightforward. If there are doubts, please let me know. Cash is 1,11,000. Cash is 1,11,000. Total current assets. Total current liabilities. Net working capital. And we are required to do tandem committee norms. Net working capital is 42,83,500. Total current asset 50,23,500. Current liability 7,40. And your net working capital. Net working capital is 42,83,500. Complete this. There are three formula to do tandem committee norms. So I'm going to do this. Complete this first. Complete till this. Let me know if there are doubts. Okay. Tandem committee norm. Method 1. 75% of current assets. 50 lakh. 23,500 minus 75% of current liability. Method 1 is 75% of current assets minus 75% of current liability. Write the numbers in some time. Method 2 is 75% of current assets minus 100% of current liability. Minus 100% of current liability. Every method has its own way of doing it. First method is 75% of current asset minus 75% of current liability. As I had explained in my earlier set of videos, basic objective is to have a current ratio of 1.33. In that logic, these formulas are devised. Method 2 is 75% of current assets minus 100% of current liability. Method 3, 75% of non-core current asset. Question has said something as core current asset. Problem has mentioned, you take the FG. Compute the MPBF for the company using three criteria. Assume stock of FG to be a core current asset. So non-core is minus the FG portion, minus 15,60. 75% of non-core current asset minus 100% of current liability. Minus 100% of current liability. 75% of non-core current asset minus 100% of current liability. So 75% into 50, 23, 500 minus 75% into 7 lakh 40 thousand. 50, 23, 500 and 7 lakh 40. Method 2 is minus 100%. 100% will have to subtract. Method 3 is non-core. 
minus 15 lakh 60,000 minus 15 lakh 60,000 75 percent of non-core current asset minus 100 percent of current liability we just check this calculation alone 5023 minus fg value into 75 percent minus these are the three methods answer each of them method one is 75 percent of current assets minus 75 percent of current liability method two 75 percent of current asset minus 100 percent of current liability and method three 75 percent of non-core current asset minus 100 percent of current liability complete this the important learning in this question the important learning in this problem comes in comes in as far as your uh, one is credit as calculation there i think there is slight bit of variation and data's computation also some different situations are given. Uh, with this, I'm kind of done with your this RTP. We have covered this RTP. Question 10 is a theory question which you can refer. We are done with this RTP. If there are doubts, you can let me know. Else I end the session. Okay. Thank you, friends.